The NFL season may be over, but don't worry, football is not done. We have the XFL starting up tomorrow on Saturday. I'm going to be giving a rundown of how it's going to work, the schedule, um, the divisions, and then I'm going to be giving my very expert opinion on this XFL season, my four predictions. Let's get right into it, though. There's going to be two divisions, North Division, South Division. In the North Division, we have the DC Defenders, Seattle Sea Dragons, St. Louis Battlehawks, and the Vegas Vipers. In the South Division, we got Arlington Renegades, Houston Roughnecks, Orlando Guardians, and San Antonio uh, Brahmas. It's a type of chicken. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'll learn as I go. But here we go. Jumping on over to the schedule, we are going to predict every single game. I think it's 10 weeks. We're starting right into it. Vegas Vipers versus Arlington Renegades. I'm going to be giving the win here to the Vipers over the Renegades. Again, very expert. I know a ton about this league. I know every single player. I know exactly how it's going to go. Orlando Guardians and the Houston Roughnecks. Guardians are going to get this one done just barely over the Roughnecks. It's going to be a good game, but Orlando is going to get the win. Now moving on to the St. Louis Battlehawks versus San Antonio. I think the Battlehawks are going to squeak, squeak out a win here. If I remember correctly, last time... We had the XFL, um, the Battlehawks were pretty good. Seattle Sea Dragons at the DC Defenders. You know I got to rock with my team. Let's go Sea Dragons. We get a win in week one. Moving on to week two, St. Louis Battlehawks at Seattle Sea Dragons. Sea Dragons jumping off to 2-0, two huge divisional wins. DC Defenders at Vegas Vipers. Give me the Vipers to jump out to 2-0 um, and the Defenders to fall to 0-2. Now we got... San Antonio versus Orlando in Orlando. Give me Orlando to move on to 2-0. We got um, Arlington at Houston. Give me Houston to win. I love Houston's logo. It's giving me Oilers vibes. That's clearly where the inspiration came from. Then we got the Sea Dragons at the Vipers. This is where the Sea Dragons' first loss will come. Vegas moves on to 3-0. We got the Battle Hawks at the DC Defenders. Um, and the DC Defenders are going to get their first win of the season here, beating the Battle Hawks. Then we got Orlando at Arlington. Um, give me Arlington in this one to upset the undefeated Orlando Guardians. And then lastly, we got San Antonio at Houston. Uh, give me Houston to win this game. Moving on to week four, Houston at Orlando. Uh, give me Houston again. I think Houston's going to go on a nice little streak here. Uh, San Antonio at Seattle. Give me Seattle. You might notice a theme here with San Antonio. I don't like them this season. Don't ask me why. I just don't. We got Arlington at St. Louis. Give me St. Louis in this one. Then we got Vegas at D.C. And this is going to be a win for Vegas as they move on to 4-0. Week 5, we got Houston at Seattle. Seattle is going to get this win over Houston. D.C. at St. Louis. Uh, Give me St. Louis over D.C. Then we got Orlando at Vegas. And Orlando is going to get this win. uh, Making there be no undefeated teams left. And San Antonio is going to knock off Arlington at home. To make everyone have at least one win and one loss. Halfway through the season. Week 6. Seattle at Orlando. Orlando is going to take this one. Seattle is going to fall to 4-2. Orlando is going to move up to 4-2. St. Louis at Vegas. Give me Vegas here. Vegas with their fifth win of the year. St. Louis drops to 500 at 3 and 3. San Antonio at Arlington. Give me Arlington. San Antonio's fifth loss on the season. Uh, Houston at DC. Ooh. Um. Give me Houston here. Week 7 now. Seattle at Arlington. Um, Seattle wins this one. Arlington drops to four, uh, two and four. Or that's not right. I missed one. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Uh, St. Louis at Houston. Uh, St. Louis is gonna take this one. And then we got San Antonio at Vegas. Um, give me Vegas. DC at Orlando. This is going to be a win for Orlando. Uh, And then week 8 now. Almost done with the season. 
Again, my very, very expert opinion. I know everything about this league. Trust me, this is exactly how the league is going to go game by game. And of course, St. Louis is going to knock off Vegas. We can have Vegas just run the league. So St. Louis moves up to their fifth win. Then we got um, Orlando knocking off Arlington. And then, why not? Let's just say San Antonio gets a win over Houston. Because why not? They need to, to win another game. Houston drops to 500. They drop a crucial game as they're trying to stay in a playoff spot. And then, you know what? Seattle's going to beat DC because DC sucks. Week 9 now. Um... Vegas at Houston. It's going to be Houston. Houston wants that playoff spot. Vegas now drops uh, to a tie with Seattle. Uh, Orlando versus San Antonio. Um, give me Orlando. Because they're just the way better team, obviously. Arlington at D.C. Uh, D.C. is going to get their second win of the, of the season here. And then we got the Sea Dragons are going to knock off St. Louis again to get the sweep of them in a huge game that puts Seattle now first place, tied for first place in the XFL, entering the final week of the season. We're, we're going to have Orlando at St. Louis. Orlando's already clinched a playoff spot. They ain't playing for anything. Uh, St. Louis got everything on the line. St. Louis is going to knock off Orlando here. Then we're going to have... DC Defenders versus San Antonio. This is the toilet bowl. No one cares about it. But guess what? San Antonio is going to win it. And then we're going to have the Houston Roughnecks, who aren't really playing for anything because they've already clinched a playoff spot, against the awful Arlington Renegades. And Houston's not going to care, so Arlington's going to get the win. Houston's going to drop to 500, but they're still in the playoffs because they're in the very, very weak South Division. Then we got Vegas at Seattle. Vegas got everything to play for. They have to win to get into the postseason. Seattle, they've already clinched a spot. They don't really care about this game. So, give me Vegas. And there we go. I've just predicted all the games. And then, no, I'm going to go predict the playoffs. So, I don't know how the XFL playoffs are going to work. I couldn't find any information about it. But my best guess based on the information I have found is the top two teams from each division will play each other in a semifinal, as listed here, for a chance to play in the championship. Now, my final standing predictions are the North, we got the Sea Dragons at 7-3, and three, Vegas at 7-3, and three, Battle Hawks at 6-4, and four, Defenders at 2-8. and eight. In the South, we got Orlando at 7-3, and three, Houston at 5-5, five and five, the Renegades at 3-7, and seven, and the uh, San Antonio at... Uh, three and seven. Now, based on that, the first semifinal game would be Vegas at Seattle, and the second semifinal game would be Houston at Orlando. Now, in the Northern semifinals, the, or the Northern Championship game, I have Seattle beating Vegas, twenty-eight to twenty-four, to advance to the first ever XFL championship. And in the South, I have. Orlando knocking off Houston 31-21 to advance to the championship game. And in the championship game, we have the Seattle Sea Dragons playing against Orlando. The Orlando Guardians and the champion of my super unbiased opinion. The champion of the XFL League in the first season will be the Seattle Sea Dragons with a 34-31 victory over the Orlando Guardians. But that's my final prediction. Completely unbiased. I know a ton about this league. I know all the players. It's totally going to be correct. Now we're going to go take a deeper dive into some of the different rules. I'm really excited for this league personally. Let me know what you guys think of it down below. Who do you think is going to win the championship? I, my favorite thing about this is I seriously have no idea. I, have no, I know nothing about this league, so this is going to be really exciting. Alright, so here we go. The XFL rules. The first thing is extra points. There's no kicking extra points. You either go for one from the two-yard line, two from the five-yard line, or you can get a three-point conversion from the ten-yard line, meaning if you're down 18, it's a two-possession game. You get two touchdowns with two three-point conversions, and boom, this game's tied. So that's going to be really cool. 
Um, then here, the game timing. The XFL will, will operate with a 35 second play clock, which begins following the previous play. So not 40, not 25, 35. It, interesting. I don't think it will make that big of a difference though. The clock will start following an inc incomplete passes and out of bounds plays prior to the two minute warning of either half. Clocks will stop follow, following first downs after two minute warning of either half. So, is this the play clock as in, like, the, the snap? You are, If you don't snap in those 35 seconds to get a delay a game? I'm, I think so. The first and second half will be split by a 10-minute halftime. Oh, this is this stuff is just talking... Okay, yeah, this just talking about uh, clock stoppage. Um, and so it's got the college first down rules. A first down stops the clock until it's placed, I'm assuming, until the ball is spotted. Each team gets three timeouts. And then here's something really cool. Kickoffs, teams are just five yards apart. And the kick is from the opponent's 35-yard line. So these kickoffs are going to be crazy. And then here's the options to keep the ball. This is really cool. Teams will have two options of, get, of keeping the ball after scoring. It's like onside kicks. Your traditional onside kick any time during the game. Just your normal onside kick. You have NFL, college, all that stuff. Or this is really cool. A 4th and 25 conversion from your own 25-yard line, you can only do this in the 4th quarter. So essentially, you can either say, let's go with an onside kick, or let's go try and get 15 yards on this one play to get the ball back. I think that's really cool. Here's another thing. Double forward pass. So you know how, like, you got, like, those backward passes, you got your flea flickers, those really cool trick plays. The XFL, you can throw it forward, the guy can catch it, throw it forward again. So you get two forward passes as long as you're behind the line of scrimmage. Overtime rules. It's like, it's this is exactly, this is what the NFL needs. You get alternating attempts from the opponent's five. So it's kind of like college, but not really. You get one play from the five-yard line. Um, three times per team, two points per, per score. So let's say you, you score two out of your three from the five-yard line, boom, you get four points. Your opponent only gets one, Boom, that's only one point, or two points, and that's, so then you win. Yeah, if that makes sense, I think it should. Um, but instant replay, centralized replay with all plays subject to review from replay official. Replay may correct errors on non-reviewable plays. Yes. Play safety at any point in the game and any issue in the last five minutes of regulation plus overtime. So essentially what I'm reading here, I think, is anything can be reversed. Even non -re non reviewable plays, replay may co correct errors errors on non reviewable plays. That's amazing. Thank you. Head coach may challenge one on field ruling per game, including those in involving a foul or potential foul. Thank you XFL. Then these blaming the refs for losing the game thing won't happen because you can just challenge it, and if the refs say yeah we were right, okay, end of discussion. You can't blame the refs. This is perfect. The NFL needs this. Um, and it won't... Be, yeah, look. The, the final ruling is not made by those referees that made the call. So there's no bias in these um, rulings. It's going to be made by an officiating department that is going to be neutral, obviously. Like all refs should be. So this should take away all quote-unquote quote, riggings of the game. Um, people can't really blame the refs as much. A ton of this stuff is are just things... We've been yelling at the NFL to change. The XFL sees that. They take advantage of it. They apply it to their own league. This is what we need. I'm so excited for this league. I really hope it shines. The NFL sees it. And the NFL can adapt their own um, league and rules to have some things like the XFL does. But this is awesome. Football needs m more leagues like this. It's just a small league right now. Eight teams. Little expansion league, I guess you could say. The NFL can even use this kind of as a test test league. Um, see what works, see what doesn't. But let me know what you guys think of the XFL. I'm super, super hyped for it. That's all I got for you guys today. I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.